Hello everyone, this is Prodesilos, also known as Prod. In this video, I want to offer you a primer on GNU STO. This is a software package installation manager that I have been using for a while now to control my dot files. So let me bring up a terminal. This is running a Tmax session. The first thing you want to do with uh, STO is read the man page. Man STO. Uh, the package is named the same, so apt install STO will get you the package on Debian. Uh, as is the case with GNU software, documentation is top-notch. Uh, it provides a detailed description of the kind of issues it is trying to address, the kind of problems it uh, solves. Also, it also contains a section on the terminology it uses. Uh, this is recommended reading if you want to make use of this piece of software outside the narrow confines of uh, .file management, as I will be demoing right now. With that out of the way, let's uh, go here. I have already entered my .files directory. Actually, let's remove the extraneous features. We don't need gaps or stuff right now. And let's focus on the terminal. Um, first, let me list you the contents of my .files. So we see here that it includes several subdirectories. Uh, whose name indicates their utility. So, for example, BSPWM contains uh, files that pertain to the window manager, the binary space partitioning window manager. Font config is, a is about rules that apply to fonts, uh, colors, etc., etc. Now, to uh, explain why we need the uh, GNU STO to manage dot files, it's uh, best if we start by looking at the contents of a directory and uh, understand a bit how things work. So if you see the contents of the font config directory, it includes a dot config uh, subdirectory and inside of it we have other subdirectories and files. In total we have three directories and 12 files. Uh, in the typical scenario of you trying to copy my font configuration rules, you would uh, clone my repo locally and then uh, navigate to inside this directory and copy the contents of uh, font config this thing here uh, copy them into your home directory dot config uh, forward slash font config you would copy the contents there and you would do that manually um, because of this uh, file system structure here things would not be prone to error would not be fragile because everything is under in, everything is inside the single directory so you just copy that uh, put it in place and you are good to go so in this case using sto would not be particularly useful although it is as i will explain in a minute but it's not readily apparent why you would need sto for this now let's look at another directory the things that are the configurations about the gtk the graphical toolkit uh, that uh, is provided by the GNOME uh, project. Uh, so we see here, if I list the contents here, we have nine directories and 35 files. So things be begin to become a bit more complex. And we see here that um, um, the files here span several targets. So some things must go into .config and then inside the different subdirectories. Um, a file here must be copied to the home directory some other subdirectories here must go to dot local forward slash share and so on as you can imagine doing things by hand in this kind of environment is a cumbersome process and is prone uh, to error or failure this is where we need the uh, sto uh, and what uh, sto does it accepts so if you do sto it accepts an argument so in uh, sto parlance, the names of these uh, subdirectories inside my dot files are called packages. So um, uh, if we if we run sto font font config, what we are doing is we are telling sto to use the contents of font config. Actually, let's come here. Let's uh, bring up the contents again. The contents of this package. Uh, we are telling it to uh, take the contents of this sto package of font config, take the contents and create symlinks to them, symbolic links to them, 
uh, in the parent of the present working directory or in a target directory. By default, it will create uh, symlinks to the parent directory. If you see my prompt here, uh, it has a tilde, which is a shortcut, uh, an alias for the um, home directory. So STO will create symlinks to the home directory. If I run STO font config, everything inside of it becomes a same link uh, to the place it should be. Since it, the, as is the norm in the terminal, if it doesn't report back anything, it has worked as expected. If it, if it uh, prints out something, some message, then uh, we need uh, to attend to it. Um, because I already have symlinks in place, it will, if I run it with the verbose flag, it won't do anything still. So what I must do first is I must delete, remove that is, uh, the symbolic links. So if I delete the symbolic links, now I have nothing. So if I do stow and pass the verbose flag, it is informing me that uh, inside the dot config forward slash font config directory, everything, this is a symlink to this, the whole thing here. And I can see this if I try to, uh, actually let's delete it first. Now we have deleted it. And let's try to navigate to the home directory, dot config and then font config. I am trying to tab complete and it throws an error because that uh, path does not exist. So let's try to link to it now. Let's use sto to link to it. And then go back here and press the tab key and see what we get. Already it is telling me here that there exists a subdirectory and th this little sign here, the at sign, informs me that it is a sim link. And if I open it, I can see that it already has uh, exactly what I am looking for. What I have here already exists inside my home directory. So that's uh, very convenient. And uh, with the uh, STO, uh, as I already showed, you can delete configs or you can restow them. So the R flag will restow everything in place and you can still pass the V flag, I believe. So yeah, what it does, it removes the link and then creates the link again. And this is very useful if you move things around, if you change things, you don't have to copy them again manually to all sorts of targets. You just uh, R stow, you just stow uh, R and you are good to go. And this is of course very convenient because uh, say you clone my dot files, as I explain in my book Prots Dots for Debian. Um, say you clone my dot files and now you want to replicate my custom desktop session. You would, uh, you want, you don't want to do things manually, right? You will run sto and then bin bspwm etc etc and you are uh, placing things in place. It works. Because I have them these already, it works. So the other flags as well do the same thing as expected. No need to delve into that. Um, now that I mentioned uh, my, um, my latest book, I have a, a video in my backlog that you can check, which provides uh, further information about it. And inside that book, uh, I have a, a section on how to use GNU STO um, to manage my dot files and of course, once you learn to use it, you can apply it uh, to other use cases outside the confines of uh, dot file management. So if you want to um, read my dot files, if you want to have a look at them, it's, um, let me increase the font size a bit, gitlab.com forward slash prodesilos forward slash dot files. And uh, in the readme of that repository, you will find information about my latest book. It is uh, free of charge and freed from traditional copyright restrictions. So you can do whatever you want with it. And uh, that book uh, is a detailed guide on how you too can reproduce my custom desktop session running BSPWM on Debian. That's all for now, folks. Thank you very much for your attention.